I started realizing that not all schools, ours included, have a, a robust film program. And since we don't have a film program for students to go into full film, and what we're actually doing at this university or most liberal arts colleges is preparing people to go to film school for a master's program or a more in-depth study, it seemed superfluous to have people editing film and talking about camera angles and being more worried about that than actually what film was doing for our humanities, what it was doing for the arts, um, which is what we teach at liberal arts universities. So that kind of dictated the need to change the program. The biggest problem was we were using a singular text and the singular text had one voice that although it was very good, was not necessarily effective. And the biggest part of it not being effective was these solid based texts or single texts cannot accommodate multiple accessibility issues. Multiple accessibility issues being students that might need to upload documents to a Braillite or students that need to enlarge texts. It also didn't accommodate for students to be able to access online from any platform because textbook companies are exceptionally good at writing textbooks, but they're not very good at being technical support. And so their view is that students are sitting in their computer labs till 11 o'clock at night using the campus-based computer systems and uploadable systems. And that's not what's going on. Students are using whatever telephone they have or whatever tablet they have, or maybe a computer from 2006 because that's what their families can afford. Or maybe they're using the latest technology from Japan because they're actually from Japan. And so if our online sources can't reach them, then an online textbook, no matter how good it is, is almost completely useless. Textbooks are generally written by academics. Generally, those academics tend to have tenured positions, um, and that means that they're mostly older, affluent, white gentlemen. Um, it's no secret that in America, most of the non-tenured positions go to women, people of color, non-traditional professors. And so when you're getting textbooks, no matter how new or interesting, they generally are missing a more diverse voice uh, or a feminine eye or any kind of other view that isn't older, affluent, and white, specifically male. Being a feminine professor that teaches film is actually not something that happens pretty much anywhere, not even here on campus. Like, I'm the only one that teaches film that happens to be a femme person. But when you go and study film in film schools, it's very rare to have femme professors, femme instructors, and that's because it's reflective of what's actually going on in Hollywood or in academia. We just don't have that many women that teach. So even in just being a female professor teaching this subject matter, it changes things. <laughs> looking for films that have, that pass the Bechdel test, looking for films that don't just tell the story of a young white male overcoming his trials. So I had already started removing a lot of what we traditionally teach in film classes, Citizen Kane, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, The Graduate, etc., in order to start showing a more broad view. But once I took those out of the equation, I realized that I had to start teaching something else because all of the textbooks reference the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And so if you're not teaching that, then how can you use the text to reference that?